Welcome to Sputum Collection Training Video for Clinical Staff. After watching this video, viewers should be more familiar with 1. Procedure for applicants requiring sputum collection 2. Alternate collection methods 3. Specimen storage and transport times Let's begin with Procedure for applicants requiring sputum collection Sputum is mucus or phlegm coughed up from your lungs. Sputum samples are used to diagnose active tuberculosis, TB, and to monitor the effectiveness of TB treatment. Once the panel physician notifies the applicant that sputum specimens are required, the applicant must report for testing as soon as possible. If testing is delayed longer than two weeks, the panel physician should strongly consider testing the applicant for the presence of tuberculosis disease treatment medications. Laboratory examination for tuberculosis disease must consist of at least three sputum specimens each, consisting of 5 to 10 milliliters. Specimens must be collected at least 24 hours apart, preferably on consecutive working days. Each specimen must undergo microscopy for AFB as well as culture for mycobacteria, confirmation of the mycobacterium species, at least to the M tuberculosis complex level, and drug susceptibility testing for positive cultures. Applicants should be instructed not to brush their teeth, use mouthwash, smoke, or eat anything in the morning prior to sputum collection. Upon arrival, applicants should go through a verification process utilizing photo identification. When not wearing a mask, applicants should cover their mouth with a tissue at all times, as a safety measure, before and after the sputum collection. They must rinse their mouth with purified or distilled water before providing a sputum specimen. After rinsing, direct the applicant to the sputum collection area, usually outside or in a negative pressure booth with the door shut, where the air flows out of the room. The technician will hand the applicant the specimen container and give instructions for proper collection. The technician may start with what not to do, such as do not clear the nasal passage, do not cough from the throat, do not cough from the chest. Then the technician will communicate the following steps to more effectively collect a sputum specimen. Sit upright and back straight. Shoulders relaxed. One hand should be over your mouth using the mask or tissue provided. You can place the other hand over your stomach. Take a few deep breaths while pressing your hand lightly on your stomach. When it's time to cough, you should be inhaling so deeply that you feel it in your stomach area. Then cough from deep in the stomach. It often requires multiple coughs to obtain a proper sputum collection. As you cough from the stomach, you'll bring the sputum up from your lungs and into your mouth. Hold the sputum in your mouth. Open the specimen container, then remove the tissue from the mouth only to release the sputum into the specimen container. Then place the top back on the specimen container and tighten it securely. Cover your mouth again with the mask or tissue. Give the specimen container to the technician. The technician will hold the specimen up into the light, inspect the container to identify if they have a proper collection, both in quality and quantity. The technician checks for sputum coming from the bottom of the lungs, looking for small pieces of sputum in the specimen. The technician will tell the applicant when they have coughed enough to produce a specimen. If there is only saliva in the container, then they must come back next day for another attempt at collecting sputum. Salivary specimens are unacceptable. The collection of a true sputum specimen is of critical importance to rule out tuberculosis disease and the person collecting sputum must ensure it is not a salivary specimen before sending it to the laboratory. After collection, the technician will instruct the applicant to wash their hands. Next, let's look at alternative specimen collection methods. For applicants who have difficulty producing sputum, there are several methods of obtaining a specimen. Inhalation of an aerosol of sterile hypertonic saline, 3% to 5%, usually produced by an ultrasonic nebulizer. A gastric aspirate specimen can be used for all ages and may be especially helpful in young children. Detailed gastric aspirate guidance is published by the Curry International Tuberculosis Center. For young children unable to produce sputum, a molecular test on three stool specimens is acceptable in place of gastric aspirates. If a young child has a positive stool test, three gastric aspirates must be collected in order to attempt to culture the organism. If an adult is unable to provide sputum, flexible bronchoscopy is acceptable for obtaining a specimen. If bronchoscopy is used, only one procedure is required. During the bronchoscopy, two specimens must be obtained from different areas of the lung. 
Lastly, specimen storage and transport times. Specimens must be transported to the laboratory promptly. If not transported within one hour, specimens must be refrigerated, but not frozen. Specimens received in the laboratory must be processed within 24 hours of receipt. In summary, you should now be familiar with 1. Procedure for applicants requiring sputum collection. 2. Alternate collection methods. 3. Specimen storage and transport times.